Hey everyone, this is Dennis and uh, Amy Rose. And we, as you can see, we're not in Atlanta. <laughs> Actually, what had happened is we had recorded an episode of Mailbag with everyone else, with Campia and Schnapp, you and myself, and uh, there were some technical difficulties, so. Keeping us on our toes. Yeah, well, we were shooting this. Actually, this is uh, my office here in Hollywood. A and, lovely space indeed. And uh, yeah, so uh, Amy Rose was kind of a to join us, join <laughs> yeah. me here. And we are brain dead and exhausted. It's been quite a week, but we still wanted to give you a mailbag episode. So let's jump in. All right. Starting with Fabio Vecchianaki wrote, Hello, AMC crew. I love your show. Greetings from Venezuela. I have a question for you. What defines a good movie villain? Is it the fact that the villain seems cool because you can understand where he's coming from, the Joker, Loki, or is it when you hate the villain in a good way because he is really evil, the gladiator emperor? Personally, I prefer when I hate the villains because the payoff at the end when the hero wins is so much more enjoyable. Thanks and keep up the awesome work. I love this question. Mm -hmm. um, the last couple shows we've had, we've definitely been talking about villains in some capacity. I don't think that there's a scheme for a good villain. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, it's fun to see where... <laughs> sometimes it's fun to see, you know, good guys kind of turn that way, like Magneto, where it's kind of a nature versus nurture thing, and he start, starts turning bad because of the politics and things that directly affects him. So that's really fun, but you may not necessarily identify with it. Sometimes I just like balls to the walls, evil guys, like Javier Bardem's No Country for Old mm -hmm. Men, um, No Country for Old Men villain. I can't even speak right now. This is what Atlanta <laughs> had did to us. So thanks for bearing with us. Um, but I just, there's something really exciting about the villains and methods. Loki is a much more, I don't know, charismatic, charming yeah. villain, and the Joker was menacing, but also charming in his own creepy way. Um, so yeah, I love the many different incarnations of villains, and I don't think it's you know black or white, as I mentioned, because if you write a good character, and he can be crazy evil, and he either redeems or gets killed, or whatever his path goes, as long as it's a really good character, and not a mustache twirling villain, a character with actual depth, then I'm in. I really like, it just makes the story more compelling to me. I agree with you that there's no real formula for making a good villain. Just sometimes it's, it's one of those things where it just either it works or it doesn't yeah. work. And whether you know a lot about him, you know, and, and what he's going through like with Magneto and mm -hmm. maybe you can empathize with him. Yeah. Or someone like the Joker who's just straight up kind of, you know, psychotic. Straight so, so, evil yeah. son. So with with that but i think my favorite villains though are the ones that are the most intimidating mm, they just mm -hmm. have an intimidation factor so someone like darth vader oh, like, yeah. even though before the prequels we didn't really know you know much about him when we watched the first original trilogy but he was intimidating mm -hmm. every time he steps in the room you're just scared uh bill the butcher from uh oh, gangs yeah. of new york he's oh, yeah. another villain that i find very menacing where you don't even ha they don't have to say anything they just have to give you a look and then you you kind of get scared. So I, for me, that's kind of my favorite type of villain, but all of them are all good. Loki's good. and Halloween, mm -hmm. My Michael Myers is one of the most terrifying, and he says nothing. Yeah. And he's just there with this creepy ass mask and he just the walk and the gaze. I mean, yeah, I, there's so many good villains in cinema history. So okay. many good ones. Moving on, Ashley S. Moa wrote, Loving the show from the UK. Is there anywhere in the Oscar rulebook that states the difference between a lead actor and a supporting actor? It seems some performances fall into this category because despite having as much screen time as a typical leading performance, they are not the protagonist. I think, yeah, we had talked about this in the original <laughs> Atlanta mailbag video that we did, and we said, I don't think there is. I don't think there is uh, any set rule of, okay, this person has to be in the movie for either X amount of minutes or X amount of percentage to qualify for lead or qualify, or maybe if they go over percentage, then they all, all of a sudden are not supporting. I know John had talked about how much he hated how like, uh, like Christian, a Bale. Christian Bale, not Christian Bale himself, he loves yeah. Christian Bale, but he hated that, that Christian Bale was nominated for best supporting actor when he felt he should have been for lead for the fighter. And mm -hmm. then he ended up winning best supporting because he didn't want to go up against uh, Colin Firth in the King's speech. Yeah. I said, it doesn't really bother me that much. It's yeah. the studio's choice. They want to do, you know, I mean, in some ways it's a little politics, but I mean, the Oscars, a lot of it's politics, right? It's campaigning, it's like totally. putting up ads, it's like 
you know, sometimes there's smear campaigns that come out about certain movies. Oh, this movie is controversial because of this, and it suddenly it disappears from the the running. So I yeah. don't know. Uh, does it, does it bother you? They're in a business, after all. I mean, that's just how it goes, and they're going to cr try to, you know, give the ensemble, the actor, whatever, the best shot they can to win. The Fighter didn't bother me that much either because technically it was Mark Wahlberg's movie. Mm. I know that, you know, being the brother and Christian Bale was amazing in his transformation. Like, no one is upset that he won. They just thought he was the star. But it was Mark Wahlberg's story. So I get screen time, which there is no rule. Mm -hmm. If there was, then people could feel maybe a little more upset about it. Um, but I personally am not. I mean, the same could be said about Steve Carell in Foxcatcher. Yeah. Because I was like, no, he's supporting, but maybe he's a co-lead. And it's kind of a blurred line. So to me, it doesn't bother me. A great performance is a great performance. And as you said, there's politics involved. It is a game in the end. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really bother me that much. But no, there is no rule stating it. And if, you know, say Steve Carell, which I don't even think he's in the race, to be honest, but say Steve Carell won this one and it angers people again, maybe they'll insert some sort of rule. But mm -hmm. for now, there's not. So... We're honoring great no, performances. No, he's not winning that. That's he's a, not. It's that's a two-horse race. Yeah, exactly. Keaton and Redmayne. Keaton and Redmayne. But wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> All right, moving on. Kit Ubredi wrote, Greetings and salutations to the whole AMC crew. Love the show. Keep up the good work. I was just wondering who your favorite, excuse the way it's spelt, I am British, movie geniuses are. Mine have to be Will from Goodwill Hunting and Andy from Shawshank Redemption. P.S. It does not have to be book smart. It could also be strategy. I love this question, too, because, you know, the idea of that film genius. And, of course, we have, you know, based on real characters like yeah. the Stephen Hawking's and Alan Turing's, um, but more like from film or book adaptations. Um, John Nash from A Beautiful Mind. Mm -hmm. Verbal Kent from The Usual Suspects is one of my favorites. Um, the Rain Man is a good one. There's a lot of really good ones. What comes to mind? Uh, for me, I think this is based on a historical character, but however, is kind of also created within the movies, which is Amadeus Mozart. So in, good. in Amadeus, which is one of my favorite movies. He's a genius, mm -hmm. uh, a musical genius, but if you see his personality in the movie, he's like kind of a child. He's childlike. He's, good. he's very crude and rude and all the stuff, but when it comes to music, he he's an absolute genius. Absolutely. But you know, this is a character that's you know they they kind of created on their own, so it's like based off a real guy, but not totally. Can I do my Beethoven joke? Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? What? Banana. -na. <laughs> it's so good. You can borrow that one. It's so yes. good. All right, I'm a nerd. It's okay. Raymond Morris wrote, Love the show, and I've been following you all since just before the now famous Man of Steel review. My question is about reboots and their casting of the lead characters. In your opinion, is it better to get someone who looks and acts like the original lead, or do you enjoy seeing a fresh take on the character? Thanks, and bring on the filthy, uh, dirty animals. Um, I, I guess it depends on the tone that they want to take. Because, uh, for example... You had uh, Superman Returns, Brian Singer was doing, and he kind of wanted to make something that was a follow-up to the Richard Donner super Superman films. And so he got Brandon Ralph, who kind of evokes more of the Christopher Reeve type of Superman. So that kind of made sense. But then you have Henry Cavill and the Zack Snyder one, which is a totally different thing, which is kind of a more modern, uh, you know, post-Chris Nolan type of thing. So I don't think you have to find someone that resembles whoever was in the character before, or in the comic book. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I think John had talked about uh, Hugh Jackman as yeah. Wolverine. Totally not like the comic book character. He's like super tall. He's not short and stocky. But he's great. But he's great at it. I mean, and th there's probably a few few of you that disagree. But for in general, yeah. most people love him as Logan slash yeah. Wolverine. Uh, how about you? Yeah, I, I think that obviously if you, you know, read comics or books or whatever, you have a preconceived notion about what you expect. Comics more than books because most of the time with books you're using your imagination. So you can still like imagine someone, mm -hmm. but it's not as verbatim as comics where you actually see a visual representation and the many incarnations that follow you know, the series. Um, so I get it, having that preconceived idea of what they should look like and act and this and this. But a good actor is a good actor, and I do want him to put his own stamp on it, but also honoring what people fell in love with the character in the first place. So I think it's about that happy medium. Um, but you look at Batman, for example, 
all actors who have played him have been so different. Yes. And technically, Ben Affleck has probably received, no, I wouldn't say the most hatred. They all receive hatred in, in their time. Um, he's physically the most like Batman. So it just, it'll be interesting to see how he approaches it and, you know, the bad voice and everything that comes along with it. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I think it's a happy medium about, you know, keeping the fans happy. But, you know, you also have to modernize it for whatever fits within the film because we don't see the screenplay. We don't know what they have in mind until we see it on the big screen. So I think it's, you know, about that 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 balance. And you had mentioned before that uh, you had read the book Wild. Yeah. And, and Reese Witherspoon was not who you imagined. Not at all. But she did a good job in that. She really did. I, you know, I imagined someone who would go more raw and strip down, and she did. So you just, you know, you can have that. I wasn't like, mm, We'll see what happens, but I definitely, Alicia and I both talked about it on AMCI. She's just like, she wouldn't even been in the top 10 actresses I would have thought about for that role. It's very challenging, but she did great. So I'm always happy to be pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. if someone really commits to the role. Yeah, exactly. All right, moving on. Kevin Young wrote, Hey guys, love your show and have been watching for about a year now. I'm sitting here watching Lawrence of Arabia and it got me to thinking. It seems that these older classics that are so highly regarded have some very poor acting at times. Many of these performances would not pass now. I'm aware that the style of acting has changed over time, but have we also expected more from our actors? Could this be why my parents are not as bothered by poor acting in movies as I am? Thank you and keep the great shows coming. So we've definitely <laughs> talked about this film. It's a classic. It's definitely a classic. And, you know, first time we talked about this, I was saying how I can acknowledge how some of our younger viewers would find maybe the acting of that generation very campy mm -hmm. and just more theatrical because it was. You watch the evolution of acting and of cinema and talkings and the talkies and the effects and everything that has come along from back in the day to now and it's just it's progressed it really is film history watching the different techniques and styles evolve and it's exciting it was perfect for that era i mean o'toole classic amazing incredible this film is great and i'm sure a lot of you younger viewers haven't seen it so get on that but I do understand what you're saying about that campy theatrical aspect maybe feeling like it wouldn't work today but it was perfect for that I know you love this movie yeah um, so <laughs> are you saying Lawrence Arabia has poor <laughs> acting in it because I completely disagree uh, that the acting in that movie is phenomenal Peter O'Toole is fantastic yes I think it's a different era it's a different style of acting, and, and acting has changed through the times. You know, obviously, you, you know, there was theater before we started with uh, cinema, and so people were kind of come from that background. But I don't think the, the acting is necessarily poor. It's just that there's a, a different style, and through the years, it's changed. And, and you know, you have to remember that, that you know, you watch something, like I watch uh, uh, an old movie, let's say, like His Girl Friday. If you watch that, it's like rapid-fire dialogue. It's very stylized for that time. But back then, that's like, you know, they talked like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have to think about, okay, in the far future, people are going to look at the way we talk now and go, wow, you know, these people are all weird. All the slang. Yeah, so weird. All, yeah, it's, it's all strange. Abbreviations so, for everything. <laughs> well, and think about, uh, you know, a lot of uh, slang today comes from, like, the hip-hop culture or something like that. There's it's people in heart. the future that are going to listen to us talking and be like, wow, these people are weird, you know? Yeah. And they may watch some films uh, that are set, you know, in today that have different type of vernacular or different slang, mm -hmm. and, and they're going to think, oh, these, the performances are, are terrible, but they're not, so... Unless you're Jai Courtney. <laughs> but, but so... <laughs> Sorry. That, I think that's kind of the whole thing, is like, I think you're kind of looking through it through the lens of today, where uh, back then, that's probably kind of the way they talked and, and, and you know I, I just feel like you have to take that into account and so yeah for me yeah I, I understand why yeah. you would think that way yeah. but you have to kind of look at the bigger picture definitely and it is a classic yeah. um, and it makes me want to watch it again yeah that is it guys we're gonna kind of right here short and sweet hope you have a wonderful weekend and we'll be a little more fresh faced next week I promise Yes, uh, thanks for joining us on this edition of special edition of Mailbag. Uh, where can people find you, Amy? On Amy, on Amy Rosie at Amy Rosie on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, Movie Talk usually on Fridays 
and AMCI Indie Spotlight every Wednesday. Come expand your musical and film palette. We talk about both. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero or on uh, Instagram, Dennis.TZENG. And I'm also on Movie Talk once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers once in a while. Uh, but anyways, yeah, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com slash AMC Theaters. And we'll see you guys soon. Happy Valentine's Day. Hey, everyone. If you like this video, click that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It's free and helps you stay up to date with all the latest movie news, as well as our daily AMC Movie Talk Show. Also, make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with all of our special promotions, contests, and prize giveaways.